All right, let's start here with our key points. What are our objectives for this lecture here? We're just going to discuss organometallic reagents, very much of an introduction here. We want to learn how they're formed and some just basic key points about them. So the first key point here is uh, organometallic reagents are prepared by adding an alkyl halide with the metals such as lithium and magnesium. So that's what we're going to look at. How, we, how do we make these things? And two, what we want to see key point here is organic metallic reagents have partially negative carbons that make carbon electron dense, nucleophilic, or we can say basic. Okay, so this is going to give us an idea about how these substances behave when we react them with other species. So let's start out with the first point here. Why don't we do this? Let's start with a molecule that we've been familiar with here. It's an alkyl halide. You have a Cl and a methyl there. And I want to talk about that bond right there between the carbon and the chlorine atom there. If you remember going back here in the beginning of organic chemistry, there was this thing called the periodic table, right? Remember, it gave us the trend of electronegativity. And remember, the way that worked was electronegativity increased as you move from the lower left to the upper right here. So elements in the left hand corner were least electronegative and those in the upper right were the most electronegative. And if you remember correctly too, on the periodic table, carbon is about right here and Cl is to the right of it over here. So Cl we would say remember is more electronegative, which remember what that means basically is the bond between the chlorine and the carbon there. Since Cl is more electronegative, then he would be partially negative. Remember, he likes electrons more than carbon is one way to think about electronegativity. So more electrons would be on the chlorine side, so he'd be partially negative, and less electrons would be on the carbon side of that bond, so the carbon would be partially positive. This is what we've seen before. This is your typical polar bond right here. Now, the whole point of that, the reason why we took the time to understand that is because this gave us an idea about how this alkyl halide might behave in a reaction. For instance, let's say there just happened to be a nucleophile in the area, throwing a nucleophile in some mixture with this alkyl halide here. Well, remember, because that carbon is partially positive, he is, remember, considered electrophilic, okay? And remember, opposite charges attract, so that nucleophile would be attracted to that carbon right there. In fact, if we were to draw out the mechanism of how these two things would react, remember the nucleophile, the electrons on the nucleophile would go over here and attack this carbon like that. And likely they'd make a connection and make a bond, and maybe, you know, we booted off the Cl also in the process. So this is something we've seen before. Okay, in fact, this was the first step of an SN2 mechanism, if you remember correctly. So let's look now at, let's say, for instance, instead of chlorine, let's say there was a metal attached to a methyl. Okay, and let's just be generic, let's say any metal. Remember, typically metals are about right here on the periodic table of elements. So that means that they are, since they're to the lower left of carbon, they are not as electronegative, or we can say carbon is more electronegative in this case. So that means the bond between the metal and the carbon, we would say that the carbon is more electronegative, therefore he has a partially negative charge, and the metal, therefore, would have a more partially positive charge. So what does that mean then? It's basically, think about this, it's the opposite of the molecule above. Instead of carbon being electrophilic, in this case, carbon is now nucleophilic which means that if there were, let's say, an electrophile, if we reacted an electrophile with this molecule, then the mechanism would look like this. The electrons from the carbon would go and attack that electrophile and maybe make a bond. This is the essence right here of the organometallic compound. That's what we're basically trying to learn here is that these compounds make carbon nucleophilic or electron dense which means they will react with electrophiles. And think about this for a second. This is very important because typically, if you think of an alkane, remember an alkane is just made up of carbon and hydrogen. And carbon and hydrogen roughly have the same electronegativity. So that means in an alkane, carbon has no partially positive or partially negative charge, which means it's not really attracted to anything. And that's why alkanes are not very reactive. So by combining this alkyl, the CH3, let's say, with a metal, we're creating that partially negative charge, which now makes carbon slightly reactive. So it's a way of activating alkanes, which is one way you could think of organometallic compounds. But we're going to see in a few minutes, it's not even limited to just alkanes. 
Now, another thing we mentioned at the beginning of this lecture was that not only are they nucleophilic, remember, but usually if you're nucleophilic, you can also be very basic as well. So these compounds can act as a base, meaning this, instead of them attaching to an electrophile, let's be more specific. Let's say if they're acting as a base, remember, they would be protonated, which means they would donate their electrons to an H+. If this organometallic compound did this, it'd be acting as a base. So let's make sure we remember that. They are nucleophilic and they are also basic. So let's focus our attention now on how do we make these organometallic reagents. All right, I want to show you one way here. We have an alkyl halide there and we're adding 2Li to it. And one of the products of this reaction, the main product that at least we're focused on, is this molecule right here. The side product, not as important here, would be LIBR. That's just so you can see who went where. This compound that we create, the product on the left, is specifically called an organolithium. All right, he is our organometallic reagent, but more specifically, we're calling him organolithium because the metal here, in this case, is lithium. And notice he does have the markings here. That carbon that's directly connected to the Li Remember, he would have a partially negative charge, and lithium would have the partially positive charge. So there it is. That's one way to make an organometallic compound, in this case, organolithium. And there it is. That carbon is very nucleophilic now. But notice, I want to show you this example here, that it not only makes alkane-type carbons nucleophilic, but you can also make carbons in a benzene ring nucleophilic, which is something uh, before we've never really seen. So notice if I react this compound right here, benzene with a Cl with 2Li, what I end up getting as a product is this. It's the same reaction. I'm substituting the lithium for the chlorine here. And notice, look at our bond between the carbon and the lithium in the product there. Because of that metal, the carbon in the benzene ring would be partially negative and the Li would be partially positive. So technically what we've done here is we've made this carbon right here in the benzene ring, we've made him nucleophilic and or basic. So now we can react this thing with an appropriate electrophile. So that's how we make organolithium reagents, but this is not the only type of organometallic compound. There's actually another type here that we could make. Again, we're starting with an alkyl halide, but this time we're working with Mg, magnesium, not lithium here. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to react these two things together. And just in case, on some, in some textbooks and on some orgo exams, they like to list the solvent that's used in this reaction. And sometimes the solvent could be diethyl ether. So it's just a solvent. It's not reacting here. And what's the product of these two things right here? We end up getting this right here and this is an organometallic reagent, but specifically it's a Grignard reagent. You're going to see this constantly throughout organic chemistry. We're going to be using these molecules a lot. Now let's understand what makes this thing organometallic. Well, think about it. You have a carbon directly bonded to an Mg. So what that means, again, remember carbon being more electronegative means the carbon would be partially negative and the Mg would therefore be partially positive. And what we've done here is again created a nucleophilic carbon. So this is how we make the Grignard. So you might be wondering right now, um, how did this happen? What's the mechanism? Well, it doesn't really matter, okay? We don't really care about this in organic chemistry. Even with the organolithium reagent, when I showed you how to make one of those, it doesn't really matter what the mechanism is. However, let's just make sure we have a method to get to product, just in case we forget how this all happens. And here's all you're doing, especially for the Grignard reagent here. When you're making a Grignard and you see an alkyl halide and an Mg, all you're going to do here is take this Mg metal and just basically sandwich it between the carbon group and the Br. That's all that's really happening here, and that's as far as we should think about in terms of how this all happened. Now, what we made here was an alkyl Grignard reagent, but again, it's not limited to just that. Just like with the organolithium here, we can do it with benzene rings as well. And uh, for this reaction, I'm going to use a different solvent, just in case, because other uh, textbooks, other professors might use this solvent as well. Instead of diethyl ether, they'll use THF. So that's just another variety there. 
and we want to get the product of this reaction. We're making a Grignard, so all you're doing is sandwiching that Mg between the carbon and the Br. So notice what happened here is because that Mg is connected to that carbon, the carbon is partially negative, the Mg is partially positive, and again, we've accomplished the ability here to make that carbon in the benzene ring nucleophilic. So that's how we make our organometallic reagents. That's what it's all about. This is as far as we should at least go now. We'll look later on about how they react in another lecture. Let's just remind ourselves of the key points here. What were we supposed to learn here? That one, organometallic reagents are prepared by adding an alkyl halide with a metal such as lithium and magnesium. And two, the whole point of this is that organometallic reagents have partially negative carbons that make carbon electron dense, nucleophilic, or basic.